I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Misha Pollan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. And we all remember this story when a group of intelligence officials before the 2020 election came out with this claim that the Hunter Biden story really is the result of Russia, that this the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop would show him trading on his family name for business opportunities, that all this was the work of Russia. And accordingly, the reporting on the laptop got censored, right? Well, since we've learned that actually this was not only a lie, but a lie that came at the behest of the Biden campaign. And now we get this. This is a new email uh, that's come out. Hunter Biden laptop letter recruitment email wanted to give Joe Biden a debate talking point. So when the former intelligence officials who wrote this letter were emailing each other to put this out, they admitted they wanted to give Biden a talking point in his debate with Trump if this issue of the laptop came up. So here it is from the Washington Examiner. A recruitment email sent by Mike Morrell, who's the former deputy director of the CIA and the co-author of the infamous Hunter Biden laptop letter, wanted former intelligence officials to become signatories to help give Joe Biden a, quote, talking point during a crucial debate against Donald Trump. And here's the email from Mike Morrell, the former deputy director of the CIA, to John Brennan, the former director of the CIA. October 19th, 2020. John, can I add your name to this list? Trying to give the Biden campaign, particularly during the the debate on Thursday, a talking point to push back on Trump on this issue. (laughs) Thanks, Michael. First of all, uh, to Trump, great job cleaning out the swamp, dude. (laughs) Uh, Also, what's the big problem with this? You don't want the intelligence community interfering in the election? (laughs) Well, this is what it is. This is direct U.S. intelligence interference in this election after they did the same thing in 2016, which we're going to get to. This is two straight elections where members of the CIA, the top officials, are interfering in the election with fake claims about Russia and Trump. So uh, this is more. The revelation comes after Mike Morrell, the former Obama acting director of the CIA, admitted that the now Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, triggered him to write the laptop letter. And that's right. Morrell recently testified that he wrote that letter after getting a call from Antony Blinken. Here's the headline. Biden team sparked effort to kill Hunter laptop story former director of the CIA. And after Blinken called Mike Morrell, that's when he wrote to his former intelligence colleagues, we need to give Biden a talking point. And this is the talking point that Biden used. There are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plant. They have said that this is has all the care Four, five former heads of the CIA, both parties say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. Nobody believes it except the, his and his good friend, Rudy Giuliani. You mean the laptop is now <laughs> Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> oh, the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. And that's exactly be. what is this. That's where exactly you're what this is told. where he's going. <laughs> Judy Dunarati and his friend. <laughs> so this is outright intelligence interference in a presidential election by spreading a really consequential lie and doing so at the behest of Biden's campaign. And Biden there pretends as if this is some independent assessment put out by, you know, non-biased, non-partisan intelligence officials, when really in reality, they're doing this to give him a talking point, as they admit. Look at Trump. Like Trump didn't have anything trump had nothing for this no trump wasn't that's just how weak hillary was honestly the how he blew her all over the stage and biden could do this it's true it's true and this is mike morrell uh he is the former deputy director of the cia and again this was his testimony to congress so they asked him prior to blinken's call you did not have any intent to write the statement and morrell said i did not and he's asked okay so this call triggered it did yes this intent in you yes absolutely so he's admitted that Antony Blinken calling him triggered his uh, putting out that letter and getting former intelligence officials to sign on. Why are they saying it that way? Why can they have Anthony Blinken ask you to do this? It should be the normal way to... Well, when they asked him, did Antony Blinken ask you to do this? He said, "Not. I don't recall. What a prig. Not to my memory, no. And of course, he doesn't need Blinken to make a direct request. He just needs Blinken to call him and tell him about this right. laptop and that they think it might come from Russia. And that's all he needs to know. Here's Glenn Greenwald. It's hard to imagine a worse, more anti-democratic and more illegal disinformation campaign. The nation's most powerful institutions, some legally barred from domestic interference, united to concoct a lie to ensure Biden won. 
not one outlet spreading the lie has retracted. So this is former intelligence officials who work for the CIA, which is not supposed to meddle in domestic politics, spreading a lie. And we all remember what happened. Every single major media outlet pretty much across the board parroted that lie and has not retracted it since. And what's amazing is they've done this now not just in one election, but two straight elections. This is what I wrote recently, the Russiagate playbook. Ex-CIA chief admits interference in two straight elections because in 2016, recall that the same people also claimed that Russia was meddling in the election, and they even claimed that Trump was conspiring with them, and it's the same crowd that pushed this to the point where the CIA even had to warn Obama back in 2016 That Hillary Clinton conjured the Trump-Russia scandal. And this is an overlooked fact. Back in the summer of 2016, the CIA obtained intelligence that Russia was aware of a Hillary Clinton plot to manufacture ties between Trump and Russia. And they thought this intelligence was so important that they briefed Obama on it. And of course, we didn't find this out until years later, until many years later. And Obama was like, that's a great idea. (laughs) And it's the same thing. So we saw Biden there pretending as if these former intelligence officials had made some independent assessment, hiding the fact that his campaign had triggered their claim that the Hunter Biden laptop was a Russian plan. Same thing with Hillary Clinton in 2016. Here she is. Computer scientists have apparently uncovered a covert server linking the Trump organization to a Russian-based bank. And this is right before the 2016 election. Hillary Clinton is saying that some independent computer researchers have uncovered a covert channel between Trump and a Russian bank. That, this is the one that when Matt Taibbi was on Bill Maher, Bill Maher blurted this out. Well, yeah. What about the <laughs> covert server linking it to a Russian bank? Yeah. That's a Hillary lie. I don't know if this, they, this, this, is a di- this is a direct Hillary lie. And here she is again. It's time for Trump to answer serious questions about his ties to Russia. And she's using the Alpha Bank story uh, as evidence of that. This is October 31st, 2016, right before the election. And now we learn this. This was years later. Hillary Clinton personally approved plan to share Trump-Russia allegation with the press in 2016, campaign manager says. <laughs> that allegation was that Russian bank allegation on top of the Steele dossier, which the campaign also paid for. And this guy, Mike Morrell, uh, who worked for Obama uh, as deputy director of the CIA and was rumored to work for Hillary Clinton at the CIA and with Joe Biden at, at the CIA as well, he helped spread these Trump-Russia collusion lies back in the summer of 2016. So here he is. This is Mike Morrell, the same guy who wrote that Hunter Biden laptop letter at the behest of the Biden campaign back in 2016, August 5th, 2016. I ran the CIA. Now I'm endorsing Hillary Clinton. And listen to what he says. On November 8th, I will vote for Hillary Clinton. Between now and then, I will do everything I can to ensure (laughs) she is elected our 45th president. And I mean everything. And I mean everything because look what he says. He's willing to spread her lie that Trump is a Russian asset. He writes this in the New York Times. Donald Trump is not only unqualified for the job, but he may, but he may well pose a threat to our national security. President Putin of Russia was a career intelligence officer trained to identify vulnerabilities in an individual and to exploit them. This is exactly what he did early in the primaries. Putin played upon Trump's vulnerabilities by complimenting him. He responded just as Putin had calculated. Okay, uh, question. Aren't you, uh, Michael J. Morell, a career intelligence officer <laughs> trained to identify vulnerabilities in an individual and exploit them? And you're doing it at me now? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. In the intelligence business, we would say that Putin had recruited Trump as an unwitting agent of the Russian Federation. So this is the exact same thing in two straight elections. These intelligence officials draw on their experience as intelligence officers, on their presumed authority to make baseless claims about Russia, all of which serve to help the Democratic candidate and to defeat Trump. That's in two straight elections. Morrell, again, my training as an intelligence officer taught me to call it as I see it. That is what I did for the CIA. This is what I'm doing now. Our nation will be much safer with Hillary Clinton as president. He's drawing on his experience there, and he says, this is what I did for the CIA, to to call it as I see it. No, if you're an intelligence officer, you're trained to lie and spread propaganda, and you're trained to be a warmonger, which is what he is. So, for example, this is him talking about why we need to bomb Syria even more. I give them the the, the, the things that they need to both go after the Assad government, but but also to have have the Iranians and the Russians pay a little price, right? When we were in Iraq... The Iranians were giving weapons to 
the Shia militia who were killing American soldiers, right? right? They were making, the Iranians were making us pay a price. We need to make the, the Iranians pay a price in Syria. We need to make the Russians pay a price. The other thing I would do- We make them pay the price by killing, killing Russians? Yes. And and killing Iranians? Yes. Covertly. So you don't tell the world about it, right? You don't stand- So you just blurted it (laughs) out? You just blurted it out. (laughs) So this is the this is the mindset of this guy. He's willing to advocate killing Russians and Iranians in Syria, and he's willing to openly lie in the service of his candidate. And you have to wonder why he did it, why he thinks Hillary Clinton would make the U.S. safer. Well, Trump back then in 2016 was talking as if he was against the kind of interventions that Michael Morales spent his career pushing. And you have to wonder if what motivated him, at least in part, was to deny Trump the office because he didn't like Trump talking about. Uh, curbing wars. Now, of course, when Trump came into office, Trump didn't do much in the way of that at all. He escalated uh, in some ways too. But Michael Morell wanted to interfere because he wanted to make sure that there was no chance of anybody uh, stopping the wars that he's advocated his whole career. Do you know what they sound like? They sound like back when uh, weed was starting to get legal and then <laughs> the DEA when they'd be talking, no, it's so dangerous. We have to keep it. <laughs> and what's crazy is, so Mike Morrell is not just a former intelligence officer interfering in elections. He's employed by the media. Here's Max Blumenthal back in 2018. CBS has hired Michael Morrell, the former CIA director, who urged the U.S. to step up its proxy war in Syria to make Russia and Iran pay a price and scare <sighs> Assad. He joins other ex-CIA directors in reaping lucrative media contributor jobs and book deals. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Finally, a CIA. I, I don't know how somebody would look at this and be like, oh, cool. The CIA guy is going to tell me on the, I, I, how are you different than China state news? Absolutely. China, I think in China, they don't even know the name of their CIA, right? <laughs> the people that don't even know the name of it, it's that secret. We're so authoritative. We have our actual intelligence agency runs your news right exactly in your face. Exactly right run our news and openly interfere in our elections and it's totally normalized and it's totally promoted by the media because the media works with these people it hires them as their experts god i hope we don't turn out like china <laughs> and then people have to wear masks all the time and morel by the way has a documented history of lying through his teeth so uh here is a show here look at him <laughs> <laughs> here is a headline from the military times senate staff disputes former cia officials defense of torture so michael oh. morel defended the, U- the u.s the cia torture program uh, and was accused of lying about it. Do you have it. his defense of it? I'd love to hear his lie of why that's cool. Well, here's Diane Feinstein. Uh, back when she was more with it, she called out <laughs> a book by Michael Morell saying that it repeats the same false charges of previous tortured offenders. And so she, she did this whole chart going through Michael Morell's book uh, about the CIA torture program and showing all the ways in which he lied. So she did a fact check, inaccurate and misleading assertions related to to the CIA torture program. Feinstein did this. Feinstein staff did this, yes. Oh, so, yeah. okay. Yeah, and it's a long, it's a, you know, it's a very, very long chart they did showing what a liar he is. Um, and uh, this helped, helped lead to uh, spiking his nomination, his potential nomination as the director of the CIA under Biden. Because again, Blink, uh, when Blinken asked Morrell to interfere in the election, he was speaking to a guy who was going to be possibly B- uh, Biden's director of the CIA. But after Biden won, Democratic concerns over Morell and torture undermined his bid. So that, that's the reason he didn't get in. Oh, wow. But can you imagine if he did get in, like this absolute, I mean, I know they're probably all psychopaths, but I, he seems like an extra, like the worst kind, not a nerd, a dork. And it's a blatant liar in multiple serious issues. So he also lied to the US government about the Benghazi attack. Remember the Benghazi attack in Libya? That was the this U.S. consulate in Libya that was used to ship weapons to Syria, and it was attacked, and the Obama administration initially covered it up, and Michael Morell was a key part of that. So members of Congress accused him of lying to them about Benghazi. This is from back then. Two leading Republicans on the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence say Michael Morell provided an account of his role in Benghazi that was often highly misleading and at times deliberately false. So he's been accused of lying multiple, multiple times. And now here's Cash Patel. Cash Patel is a former senior official under Trump, a former federal uh, public defender. And we've interviewed him here on the Jimmy Dore Show before. He did a lot of work to expose the lies behind Russiagate. And he is going to explain uh, how Michael Morell has repeatedly lied and interfered in elections. As the deputy director of the CIA, Michael Morell specifically changed the intelligence presentation 
about the attacks on the Benghazi consulate, the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, and removed the verbiage that said al-Qaeda had ties to it, which was the actual intelligence. That's what was happening. And then you remember the whole Susan Rice debacle where she went on the world stage and gave a news conference that was largely false. And she's been attacked for it ever since. Now, the question is, and it's been posed to Michael Morrell back then, this is what, seven, eight, nine years ago, why did you change key points of data of intelligence? You, the deputy director of the CIA, knowing it was going to the White House to be utilized to brief the world, essentially, on what happened when a U.S. ambassador and three other Americans were killed in Benghazi. You know, one of the most uh, horrific attacks in modern U.S. history on Americans. So I think some of our audience might ask, well, why would he do that? Why would he take out al-Qaeda and any references to that? Because as you recall, Jan, and maybe some of our audience doesn't, is originally the Benghazi attacks were not styled as a terrorist attack as it was first reported. And that's what the Obama administration wanted out there, that it was not a terrorist attack. Yet, the Obama intelligence community had absolute intelligence at the time of the reporting to show it was an al-Qaeda-related terrorist attack. And of course, it's now since been investigated, prosecuted to show just that. So the Obama administration knew that al-Qaeda was involved in the attack on Benghazi, but they covered that up. And in part, that was to help Hillary Clinton because she played a major role in this and she was going to run for president in, likely in 2016. So this would hurt her election chances if it was found out that she was covering up al-Qaeda's role in an attack on Benghazi. But another major part of this is that the U.S. was helping to – the whole reason that the U.S. was in Libya running guns from Libya to Syria was they were running guns that came from the stockpile of Gaddafi who they had overthrown. And to overthrow Gaddafi, they supported a Libyan insurgency that had elements of al-Qaeda. And they oh, did that's where we started becoming friends with them again? That, that This was a major key point. So, for example, here's an example from the Wall Street Journal. Amid, Lib amid Libya rebels, flickers of al-Qaeda in the Libyan insurgency that the, the U.S. was supporting. <laughs> and so when the same insurgency then attacked the U.S. in Benghazi, it was pretty embarrassing that we had supported the same people who not only were al-Qaeda, but were also killing Americans in a consulate. There's so these flick flickers, flickers here and there, you know, a little sprinkled in. And worse, so the U.S. was supporting an insurgency in Libya that had flickers of al-Qaeda. Like and like also, the same insurgency was sending weapons from the Qaddafi's loot looted stockpile over to Syria to help the insurgency there that was dominated by al-Qaeda. And a major figure uh, in al-Qaeda in Syria, uh, sorry, a major figure in the insurgency in Libya who the U.S. was working with, he met with members of the Free Syrian Army, which was a uh, rebel group that included elements of al-Qaeda, to give them weapons. And uh, Ambassador Chris Stevens was implicated in that. The ambassador who was killed in Libya, he was implicated in gun running from Libya to Syria. So I think one of the reasons why Morrell at the CIA covered up al-Qaeda's role in the attack on the Benghazi consulate is because not only did the Obama administration back al-Qaeda and the Libyan insurgency, but also that insurgency was then aiding the U.S. allies in Syria to give them weapons from Libya. So I think that was a major part of the cover-up as well. And uh, here, by the way, is a member of the Libyan insurgency meeting with John McCain. This is back when they, they were all friends. And, uh, and here's Jake Sullivan admitting that al-Qaeda is on our side in Syria. So I think that was a major reason why you had Morrell lying to Congress to cover up al-Qaeda's role. And again, that's why Morrell was saying he was endorsing Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton was a major figure in all of this. So just hit pause on that for a second. At this point in time, I think it's the summer of 2016-ish, if I have my dates right, nobody had actually labeled President Trump a Putin asset you know, to do so is a significant step. It's to say in U.S. intel speak that a foreign premier of Russia had recruited an American citizen running to be president of the United States and was on the Russian payroll to be an intelligence asset against America. That's what it means. Sounds crazy. Well, the former deputy director and acting CIA director, Michael Morrell, at the time in the summer of 16, was the first one to prominently posit that into the mainstream media cycle before a presidential election. He literally wrote, it's likely in his experience that Donald Trump was Putin's asset. And then what happens? We've seen this narrative before, Jan. The media comes in, the mainstream media comes in and laps it up, whoever had a dislike for Donald Trump 
to barrage him with the false headline that Donald Trump was somehow a Russian asset. So So that's, again, 2016, the same playbook. U.S. intelligence officials make a claim. The media laps it up, parrots it. And even when all the evidence undermines it, they don't. Correct. And the same thing was deployed in 2020 when the New York Post published this story about Hunter Biden's laptop. And all it took was some former intelligence officials to say that this comes from Russia for the story to get ignored and even censored on social media. <laughs> Hunter it brought him, he goes, bring, him, Mar- bring him like a cart, no, a gallon ice cream when you see him. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> and for people who say, well, you know, who cares? Because this happened to Trump and we oppose Trump. So why should we care about this uh, fake effort to defeat him? Well, look, the same playbook Michael by the same people was deployed against uh, uh, deployed their intelligence experience against Bernie Sanders back in the 2020 primary. Bernie Sanders briefed by U.S. officials that Russia is trying to help his campaign. <laughs> well, then I resign from the race. <laughs> and that was used to undermine Bernie. So the point is, anybody who is deemed a threat to the establishment, who is deemed a threat to warmongering, we've enabled now a playbook where former intelligence officials can make a baseless claim that's a lie to help a campaign and the whole media nods along. I mean, it really is ironic that they say Russia playbook over and over again. They literally have a Russia playbook that they use over and over again. It's the Russia Gate playbook. Exactly. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special. COVID lies are funny. Ha, ha, ha.